Okay, so today we're gonna to take a look at the Blue Eddy EB3A. You know, one of the things I don't talk about much in my videos is our prepping that we do. We are prepper stackers and we do prep and we have a lot of things towards our prepping. Of course, like stacking, there's always more that we want. But one of the things we picked up over the holidays was this Blue Eddy EB3A 268 watt hour solar generator. Its capacity is up to 600 watts, which you can see down here. And it's pretty cool. It's an entry level device but it can do quite a few things for as small as it is. It only weighs 10 pounds, it's very light, you can take it with you very easily. And you can see here the display, we're showing no input, no output, it's 88% charged. And the, D the AC is on because I've got this light on down here. You can see when I hit that button, let's do it again with that displayed. See the AC comes in and the AC goes off. It's an eco mode and that we'll talk about later, and we'll show it in the app when I show how to use the app. But what can this thing do? So we have two AC plugs. We have a DC in, like for you know, lighter like on a car. And then these two ports can also do DC. So these barrel ports, you get a little adapter that comes out, plugs in, comes out. It's got the female piece, so you can plug in more DC items. You can see here, this display goes off pretty quickly on you. Just make sure it doesn't use up all your power just for display. Down here are your inputs. This is your input for your solar panel, which we'll cover later. And this is your input for AC plug, which we'll do here in a few minutes. So this is how you charge the device. And over here, this is how you run things off the device. And one of the cool things here too, is that you can do USB devices and USB-C up to 100 watts. Now that's huge. My MacBook Pro, which I'll charge in here in a few minutes, needs 85 watts. And a lot of these other competitors only do like 60 watts or 80 watts. 100 watts is a really nice ability. Now this is for charging. You cannot take my MacBook Pro charger and plug it in here to charge the device. This is only a power unit, it's only distributing power. You can, cannot charge through it. And then again, we have the normal USB-A. These are called A, these standard USB ports, and this is USB-C, the newer ones that's been used for a while. And then on top, we also have the ability to wirelessly charge. So why don't we go ahead and, and charge some things here and see how this works, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in a couple AC things. So I'm gonna, this just shows the display, but to turn on the AC, I'm gonna come down here. And you see here, the AC's on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull over a light here. Just a regular lamp from my desk. Let's plug that in and turn it on. Give me a minute here, of course my cables are all Wrapped around everything else. All right, I'm gonna plug it in. All right, I've got this thing set up on an angle here. That's what I'm using this little black box for so it's easier to catch with the camera. All right, so again, here's the light. Got it plugged in, let me turn it back on right now. The light's off, no output. Let's turn it on. Light is on. We can see here, Blue Eddy is providing 10 watts of power to power this lamp. So that's pretty cool. So next thing I'm gonna do is a pencil sharpener. Kinda weird, I doubt you'd really use one when your power's out. You might, right? Maybe pass your time while you're doing some drawing. But I thought it would show a good, you know, pull on the AC when the pencil gets sharpened. So I just got this thing off my desk. I already plugged it in. And let me get the display panel back up. You can see there's still nine watts being used from the lamp over here. So let's plug the pencil in and see what it does. Keep an eye up here on your output. 
see what kind of output it's going to put on this blue eddy. Two hundred and twenty five watts, but you can see here the blue eddy handled it with no problem, kicked in all the wattage that it needed to sharpen that pencil. So that's pretty cool. Now I wanted to get, you know, real life examples, you know, this thing will power your modem, your computer, your router, your TV. I mean this little device, if you want to go looking online to some other YouTube channels who have already done those tests. This little device can power all those things plus a refrigerator at the same time. Now, the refrigerator will put a decent draw on it and the device might only last three to five hours. Depends on how efficient your refrigerator is, but it can do that stuff. If you had a short-term power outage, you would be able to plug your refrigerator in right here, one of these plugs, and use it for several hours to keep that thing going. So don't let the small size fool you here. Now, is there bigger sizes and better, better ones for more, more wattage during a longer outage? Of course there is. But to get into it, I wanted to buy a device, see how we used it, see how we liked it, see how well Blue Eddy works. And I have to tell you, I really like the Blue Eddy line. There's plenty of competitors out there. I'm really surprised how many different solar generators are out there. There's a lot of them. But this one, I like a lot. All right, so now we've got nine watts going. We don't have a consistent draw from the pencil sharpener, but we saw that it will we'll put a nice draw on it. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in my MacBook Pro. Again, that takes 85 watts. So let me go ahead and plug in the one side here. And then we're gonna plug in the other side Showing the charge, it's got 70% right now. All right. So to get this going, we have to turn the DC on. And I keep hitting this button here to just get the panel back on, but that's also how you turn on your DC. Turning on the DC, you see it right there, activates all this stuff right here. So DC is activated. Let me go ahead and Plug it in over here like this. All right, let's see what it did, does here. Okay, here we go. Output's going up. It's up about, yeah, only 28. And we come back over here, we can see that it's charging. You see the little bolt there on my charger? So this little device is charging my MacBook Pro and so far, between the lamp and the MacBook Pro, we're only using 39 watts. If we get that pencil sharpener going again, 264, but it can handle up to 600. So it's handling all this stuff just fine, all right? So next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave the MacBook Pro plugged in. Sorry, I, sh I should have put this on a tripod or something, but I figured it's moving around, showing things back and forth, that it'd be easier to hang on to it so I'd have that flexibility. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in an iPad. So let me scoot the, the stuff back a little bit. Let me get a charger. Okay, so let's get this iPad charging. Got it sitting right here. So we're gonna use this USB-A cable. We're gonna plug it in over here, like so. Turn on, and see where we're at, we're at 54 watts. So the MacBook seems to be pulling a little bit more power right now. Let's take the other end of this cable, charging cable, plug it into the iPad, like so. You can hear it just dinged. And it is now charging. You can see a little lightning bolt right there. And let's look at our thing over here. So now we're up to 58 watts. Still have 86% left on this thing, saying 3.6 hours left of charge for everything. It's an estimate, of course. Just went down to 85. All right, so what do we have here? We got quite a bit going on. We got our MacBook Pro charging. We got an iPad charging. 
We got a light plugged in. We got a pencil sharpener plugged in. Still able to easily handle all that. And now, why don't we do this? Why don't we plug in another device? Let's plug in an iPhone. All right, this iPhone currently at 30%. So let's take this cable, plug it in. See, it's pretty annoying the way this display it constantly blinks off. Maybe with a firmware update, they'll take care of that. But right now they haven't, all right? So we're gonna, we're gonna take this iPhone, we're gonna plug in the charging cable. You heard it ding. You can see it's charging. And now we're only at 65 watts, 64 watts. So look at this. iPhone, iPad, MacBook Pro, a light are all charged in there. Plus we know the pencil sharpener, but it's not constant draw. But so far, that's quite a few devices for the family that I plugged in while the power's out and needing to get a charge. So let's do one more thing. I don't know if this is gonna stay on there because I got the machine at an angle, right? But how about some wireless charging on top? There you go. You can see it's charging. You can see the output, 66. So now we have one, two, three, four, five devices charging, and we're only at 70 watts. And this thing can go up to 600 watts. We can plug in a TV, we could plug in our modem, we could plug in another light, you could plug in a fan. A fan would be a great thing to plug in. Now fans, you know, can pull some wattage depending on the size of them, but still you could get your fan running here for a while. But I really love this little device. This thing is, is uh, really, really awesome. And you can usually get it for a discount. I will uh, go ahead and bring up some pictures here of some screen prints that I pulled off the internet with it being on sale. It's very frequent you can find it on sale. And then later we'll talk about the solar panels. Those things are awesome too. This thing charges by solar. This thing charges very fast with solar power. Plus, you can charge it while you're using it. Some of these devices, you can't do that. So let me go ahead and just take this phone off because I don't want to slide, slide onto the granite. So if I want to charge this up, let's turn this back on so we can see the display. Here's where I plug in the AC plug to charge it. So I'll have my camera going a little crazy here for a minute. It is plugged in now, so we're charging, AC charging. You can see here, this is pulling in, this is the input now. How many watts are being used to charge it? And then over here is the output. We can see this little band here showing that it's charging. It's at 83%. And now it's showing that it's only gonna take 0.2 hours to charge it, so that gauge changed. And the bottom there, so out of my AC outlet, we're pulling 263 watts right now. It's charging and it's outputting at the same time. And again, I, this is fairly common nowadays for a lot of them, but make sure if you go out and you buy one, you check but some, because some of them do not allow you to uh, plug into them while they're charging. So that's an important feature to look for. Now, while this AC is plugged in, I can also plug in the solar panels and I could have like 450 watts charging this all at the same time. And that's, that's critical because that means you'll charge up really quick. So you can do both if times are good. Let's say your power came back on, you know it's only gonna be on for a little while. Get it plugged into the AC, get the solar panel going, get it supercharged and be done with it. All right, so this is really nice. I really love this device. Again, it only weighs 10 pounds. So you can carry the boom box to the beach with you. You could take this to the beach to be charging your devices while you're sitting out there, take it camping with you. Um, it also comes with a, the ability to DC charge as well. So on the same port that you plug your um, 
solar panels into right here. You also have a DC charger that you can plug it into your car. See the end of the port right here. Sorry, right there. Plug that in. Plug this into your car charger. You can charge it in your car as well. Now my car has a plug in the back, in the very back, where you would put your luggage or whatever back there. It also has a, a DC charger, so you could just throw this thing in your back seat, charge it up. Now one thing I wouldn't do, this charger is a little small, there's some bigger ones. One thing I wouldn't do is have your car off and be charging it, because it potentially could drain your battery. So driving down the road, things like that, that's perfectly fine. So this, this did not come with the device. I had to buy this separately. It was only 10 bucks, bought it directly from Blue Eddy. So only 10 bucks, but this, we'll talk about this later in the video. This is the solar panel charger that plugs into here. And then the other two ends here go into your solar panels. Those are, this, this, this converter did come with the device. So you do get this and we just can get that DC charger. So it's humming a little bit from charging. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it because you don't really need to be charging it right now. It's got plenty of charge on it. So that's that's pretty cool, huh? This is a this is a pretty cool device. I like it a lot. Now what I wanna do is I wanna get a big boy and oh this and that fan kicked in. So it does get a little noisy. Got the vents over here. Not too bad though. I mean, certainly just some white noise in the background. Um, you can see it's only uh, outputting 54 watts, up to 61 now. So one of the things I'd like to do is I'd like to get it a uh, bigger version of this. Blue Eddy has one called the ACP 200 Max. And that device handles up to 2200 watts and it can have batteries added to it for extra capacity. So it has ports on the side where you can like daisy chain and batteries and you can get, you know, just some fantastic times out of it. Now, if I had one, I'd review it, I'd review it for you because I'd really like to have one to review because that, that device is a monster and would definitely meet most of your needs in, the, in, in a power outage. Now, you get one of the generators that you know, go out there and, you know, feed it full of gas and run it outside and it's nice and noisy. And, but this you can put inside your house. It's, it's a solar generator, right? You can power it off of solar panels. There's no noise coming from it. You know, you can hook things to it, right directly to it. And they're made with uh, Life PO for batteries, which are the good ones, lithium iron, I believe they are. And expandable. I mean, that's one thing I like about these Blue Eddies is they have the top of the line technology of batteries in them. The previous batteries uh, were more likely to catch on fire and cause issues. This thing can charge up to, is it 3,500 times, 3,000 times. This has a great life cycle on the batteries. So this, I don't think you'll be disappointed in for quick little uses, for things you want to do with it. This would be awesome to have as part of your prepping. And again, the ACP 200 Max model, there's a couple other 200 models. Uh, I'd really, really like to get one of those because that would, that would satisfy us for a while. One of the big things in our neighborhood is uh, we have a lot of water that goes into our sump pump from just the water tables that are, that are around here. And one of our big concerns in a power outage is that our sump pump would quit working and you know our basement would flood really pretty quick. I'm surprised how often it comes on, especially in the summertime. And that's when we're more likely to lose power with the storms coming through. And this guy will handle that, would handle several different pumps out from, from, the, from the sump pump. So I'm really happy about that. I got a little meter to measure how much wattage is being drawn from the sump pump. It was about 278 watts. So this would easily handle, you know how sump pumps are, they, they kick on for you know, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, 60 seconds, empty the basin that all the water's going into, and it turns off and it waits till it has to, uh, to pump out again. So this little guy would definitely hold us over for quite a while. And, you know, in the meantime, I could, you know, throw some solar panels on it and 
get it charging back up for us for a little bit. So yeah, so here we go. Still charging all these, still got my light on, still got my iPad, my MacBook Pro, still charging the phones. And um, this little guy is doing the trick. So let me know what you think about this guy. Any comments below will be welcomed. Let's go ahead now and talk about the solar panels. Okay, so we have the Blue Eddy EB3A. First thing I want to do is apologize for the outside noise. We have the neighbor's kids outside playing, which is awesome. You know, February, sun's out in Michigan, 44 degrees. <laughs> it brings us out, spring fever, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the solar charging with this cool little unit. You can see right now we're at 89% battery. It says 30 hours left on it. I wish I had more battery utilization so I could charge more, but I think we'll get the point across. Okay, so here you can see the setup. It's a Blue Eddy 120 watt solar panel. And it comes with this cable that uh, comes out of the back of it for you to plug into an adapter. So the cable's right here. This one's coming from the Blue Eddy device. This plugs right into the back of it. And you have these cables that hook up to an adapter that you can plug into your device. So you got this thing charging, and this adapter comes with the Blue Eddy, comes in the box, and this comes, you know, all part of the solar panel. So if you buy the solar panel, and you buy it by the solar generator, you don't need anything else for its basic functions to charge with solar panels. So that's pretty cool. But again, we're in Michigan around noontime. And so, you know, Michigan's not a great place for solar devices. You can see here, we're charging and getting 180 watts out of that solar panel. It's about 12.05. We're gonna see how long it takes to charge us to 100%. Now, the deal is, is you could still be using this to charge things while you're solar powering. That's the beauty of one of these solar generators is that they can charge and be charged at the same time. So we can use this. This also has an AC power cord and I could have the AC power cord and the solar panel plugged in at the same time so it could be dual charging. Now this panel shuts off pretty quickly, but we can see here, it's still at 108 watts, which is actually pretty impressive. You can just see we just went up to 89%. So we've already charged a percent in a minute, minute and a half. All right, so here we go. Pretty easy to hook up. This adapter that came with the unit, comes with it, plugs into the two wires, go down to the solar panel. And the solar panel is just sitting at about a 45 degree angle facing the sun. And again, Michigan is uh, not really the uh, warmest place with a lot of sun. We can see here, it's already up to 90%. Charged at 107. I'm really impressed with that 107. If you see some of the other videos, you'll see a lot of people don't get that type of wattage out of their panels. These panels came from Blue Eddy, they're made for the unit, but you don't have to use specific brands. Almost any solar panel will work with these things, and the Blue Eddy would work with other companies' solar generators as well. So we're at 108%. Only been going for a couple minutes. Already charged, not 108%, 108 watts. Now we're down to 107 watts. We're at 90% charge. It's showing here that it should take about 0.2 hours to charge up fully. You can see a little graph there showing you where it's at on the charging scale too. So pretty cool. So let's let this thing charge. I'll be back in a little bit and we'll see how long it takes. All right, so it's about 12.16. Been charging about 10 minutes. See the panel here. All right, you can see in 10 minutes time, gone up 7% on the charge. 
It's 110 watts, 109 watts, coming out of a 120 watt solar panel, which is actually fantastic. Let's see if I can capture the sun here. It's right up there. Pretty high spot on, right on top of us. So I got a good angle for the sun. And this is, you know, an entry level device. We've talked about that. So it's not real big as far as battery, but it's it's exciting to know that in you know just a few short minutes you can get you get this thing charging up pretty nice. So that's pretty cool. All right, so about 10 minutes, 11 minutes into it, we're 95% charge. I'll check it out again here in a few minutes. So what is this little device I have in this box? I'm going to show you. It has to do with the solar panels. So let me go ahead and unbox this. I do not have my tripod with me, so I can't really hold on to my camera. At the same time, let me see, maybe I can. All right. So this is what we have inside the box. Looks like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of there. All right, so here we go. That's what you see. Got a little clip on the back if you want to clip it on. Usually I don't, I just use it to measure. And what you're supposed to do is measure up the dot with the sun. So let's get it over here in the sun. Can you see that little dot? How the dot on top creates a shadow down on the bottom. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to line your solar panel up so that that dot matches down in the center. So can you see that? Can you see how that is? It's showing you if I were to, now the sun's glaring off it, rack it over just a little bit. That's gonna be your perfect angle to get the sun's power into your solar panel. So I'm off just by a little bit. Um, a little bit of tweaking on my angle would make this perfect. So this is a really cool device, it's very inexpensive, that you can use to check the angle of your devices, of your solar panel devices. All right, and we can go back to here and see how well I'm pulling at 120 watts. Right down now it's gone down to 97 on 109. Ah, it went down because I stepped in front of it, right? Blocked some of that sun from the big guy. But we're back up to 110. What's the most I can generate is 120. So I'll tell you, that's pretty impressive for a Michigan sun. We're already up to 97%. About 15 minutes into it. So yeah, that's pretty cool. But this will help you out a lot. If you're out camping, you're out doing something, Depending on the time of day, line this up with the sunlight. See where you're at for your angle on your panels. This really helps you get the maximum charging depending on where the sun's at for the day. So yeah, this is a pretty cool little device. It's from EcoFlow, solar angle guide. But off Amazon, it wasn't a lot of money, maybe 20 bucks, 15, I don't remember now. But it wasn't a lot, and I think it's pretty cool to have to make sure that your solar panels are aligned right. Especially in Michigan, where we only have a short amount of time throughout the day to get the maximum sun angle onto our solar panels. So you can see, just went up to 98%, and we'll check back in in a few minutes. Okay, so here we are, less than 20 minutes from me hooking up the solar panel. We've got 100% charge. Shows that there's about 30 hours worth of life on it, which probably isn't true. It depends on, you know, what you're plugging into it. See, we're no longer charging, even though the solar panel's still plugged in. There's no input because it's 100% charged. So less than 20 minutes, charged 12% of the battery right back up to the fullest. And you know, we've talked before about this being an entry level unit. You're not gonna get a ton of stuff. We have a few uses for it. But before before we went out and bought a bigger unit, one that could run you know, many things in the house, maybe 
uh, you know, 2000 water, which we're definitely interested in. We wanted to get a smaller one, check it out, see how it worked, and made sure it was something that we could understand how it would work for us, you know, check out how solar panels would work on it, and just make sure that it was uh, something that we could definitely get into and could use, and, you know, being in Michigan, making sure that the solar panels would work for us. And in the middle of the winter, uh, to get it to charge at you know, 110 watts with a 120 watt solar panel, it's pretty cool. Definitely uh, thinking this is going to work for us. So that's the testing for the solar panels and how well they work.